I had to get to that point to realize, oh, I'm never going to be a great dad because I'm trying to provide for her without providing the things I need for myself. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Welcome to the Rap Dad Show, the only show where we pull up on artists wherever they may be, have them hop into the Sprinter and talk all things fatherhood. I'm your host, Esteban Serrano. I'm a TV producer, director, author, and father of three. Today, we're talking to rapper, actor, Rock the Bells radio host, podcaster, and president of the New York City chapter of the Grammys, Torre. He's a rap dad of two and has a very interesting family dynamic I'm sure will help a lot of rap dads out there. Welcome to Rap Dads, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Man, you've been one of my favorite rap dads for a long time now. Okay. But I want to take it back to um, Coney Island. What was your relationship like with your dad? Um, so, damn. This is, you starting off, we starting off crazy already. Um... <laughs> So I had a typical 90s relationship with my dad. He wasn't in the household. Um, My mom raised me. My dad was always a phone call away. I would see him on occasion, but he was not a prominent figure Mm -hmm. in my life growing up. I was cool. My uncles, you know, I would travel like my dad's brother. I would travel to D.C. and I would see them and I would see my dad at functions and stuff like that. But. Yeah, growing up, I didn't have a relationship with my dad. I'm getting emotional because my dad passed last year. Wow. Okay. Uh, we, 12 months, 13 months, right? He passed in September of last year. So it's still super fresh. Right. For and sure. it's still super painful. And um, man, you know, you just can't get back that time. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like so much. Not that I was ever bitter and mad at anything it was just so many opportunities that i didn't capitalize on mm. because i'm busy and i'm grinding i'm running around right. you know all of the rap stuff that we do of course um or the hustle things that we do no matter what field of business you in that i wish i just would have carved out more right. time to kick it with pops but pops is in a better place doing better than he was here my condolences to you, you, man. That's the most emotional I would get in this conversation. <laughs> we'll see. You know what I'm saying? We got <laughs> no, tissues on deck. I'm back to no, thugging. I'm, I'm back to thugging. All right. So where were you in your life when you became a father? In the projects in Coney Island? Um, no, that's actually not true. <laughs> so I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, my wife now, my girlfriend at the time, we've been together since high school long, just like, you know, you know what that's like. Yes. And... um. We moved out of our respective parents' households in our mid-20s. I was 24. I think my wife was 23, or maybe I was 25, 20, 24, whatever. I'm a year older than her. And so um, we got our own place, right? We scraped up our nickels and dimes. We got our own place. Even though, let me look into the... Even though she finagled me, because I was supposed to get my own place, <laughs> and she's supposed to get her own place. <laughs> and, you know, she was like, well, I'm going to be there all the time anyway. We must nice. just move in together. Vanessa Williams. I was like, yo, Vanessa <laughs> Williams, Vanessa Del Rio. And so, um, <laughs> and so, um, so we move in together and our friends and family start taking back. Oh, she'll be pregnant in a year. No. And, they put the, wow. You know, they, they put the, they put the hex on us <laughs> is what did. they did. No faith. No faith in my pullout game. Right. And so, um, yeah, as our one year lease was, <laughs> was in there, right there, we were like, well, we're going to move back with our parents because we got a whole kid coming now. Damn. So yeah, my, my, my girl at the time got pregnant within that first year. So I was living actually in a two family home in, uh, East Flatbush and Canarsie area when, when I found out I was going to be a dad. Man. Yeah. And where was music at that time for you in your life? It was at the forefront of everything. Okay. I was, like I said, I was in my early 20s. So all I did was I was rapping. I was running around. I was doing shows. I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to get a deal. I was doing all the things that Mm -hmm. you do as an aspiring artist. Um, As a 20-year-old, so I'm an adult, right? I'm 20, whatever, two, one, two, three, whatever. As an adult, um, I always had a job because I always knew the importance of being able to have money to be able to do things. Yeah. Everything was for me to become an artist. So the job was to go to the studio, right. to wear nice clothes when I showed up to places, to look the part, to be the part, etc. So it never was like I was um without work, but I always just knew it was a means to an end. All right, it's time for another rap dad tip. 
And as a father, I live by a mantra, whatever is best for my child wins. This is chess, it's not checkers. But still, some parents use their kids as a pawn, and they really do it to disrupt or frustrate their co-parent. But it always comes at the expense of the child. Whatever's best for my kid wins. Not what's most convenient, not what's less expensive, but whatever is best for my child wins. When my mother and father weren't together and I was really young, my dad found out that my mom and I were commuting on public transportation from South Philly to West Philly every morning and then back from West Philly to South Philly every evening. He went out and bought my mom a car, not because he wanted to win her back, but because what was best for his son wins. You're your firstborn is your daughter, right? Yep. Taylor? Yep. Becoming the father, especially of a daughter, like what were some of the changes that you experienced just as a result of that connection and relationship? The main thing is, this is the title, this is what? Rap Dads. The main thing was that rap stopped. Oh. Because dad started. So I couldn't live for myself. I couldn't just run around and be out late and be in the studio and be spending my money trying to do all this other stuff because I have a new human being to be responsible for. So if I was 110% in the day before I found out my girl was pregnant and the day after I was about 50% in. Wow. So I got like I went back to school and I got a second job and I spent all my time just trying to stack up paper because we, I got a child to provide for, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I didn't realize I was doing at the time was putting this big void of unfulfillment in myself. Mm. And so once she started um, kindergarten and preschool and all of that, like she got potty trained and she was able to be away for the full day. Right. And I, I could pick her up like three, four o'clock is when I went back into doing music. But... I had to get to that point to realize, oh, I'm never going to be a great dad because I'm trying to provide for her without providing the things I need for myself. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Wow. That's so, a bar right there. I mean, Wait I'm kinda, a minute. I've been known to. <laughs> yes. Yes. I feel like a lot of men and a lot of people in general would struggle with what you just said. Like, especially when, when it comes to pouring love out. Like our, our jobs at the end of the day is to love. Mm -hmm. So if we have to be this endless supply of love, but we don't have nowhere to pull it from, nowhere to yeah. pull it from because we're not loving ourselves. We're not even doing what we love that right. also would generate more love. Right. It's it's it becomes daunting. I realized early on that, oh, this is not this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what looks good on paper. This is what, you know, but this is not what I need to do. Because mm. I can't be a good dad to my daughter if I'm moping around and sad and I'm going to a place that I hate every day mm -hmm. and doing things that don't serve me. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there are many challenges that come with being a girl dad. And your relationship with your daughter is one of like, the dopest that I've seen. Thank you. How did that? How did you start to like lay that foundation? What did that early work look like? Daughters just steal your heart instantly. Mm. The toughest of the tough, the, yes. the the gulliest of the gully. You know, the, I'm a Pisces too, so I'm emotional. I'm sensitive. Like I'm tapped into that. I can fight, so don't play me though. But um, <laughs> yeah, no. From day one, from day one, you know, like she just stole my heart. And our personalities are really much alike. Mm. Um, just last night, she came in the room. She's doing a, um, she's putting together a Lego plant set. So it's like, yo, you don't want to buy plants? Nah, she got to <laughs> buy the Legos and build a Lego wow. plant set, right, for her desk or whatever. And so she was like, yo, I'm trying to figure this part out. And we sit in there, we figure it out together. So from day one to just last night, we we always super tight. And as much as she learned from me or learns from me, I learned from her too. You know mm. what I'm saying? I do believe that, that our relationship helped me overall become a student of life because, mm. I mean, down to words that I would use that, oh, dad, you can't say that. I'm like, why not? I don't mean nothing by it. It's not what, it's not about what you mean. It's about everybody else and how they, you know, and mm. I guess when you really, when I really, really get behind closed doors, I'm still the same person. Um, who I am at my core, how I came up in my core, but I'm also just mindful of the way I make people feel. 
You know what I'm saying? And what people yeah. remember about how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. And so I try to be very mindful in that. But I and she was the first person that, that made you realize to that. To make me realize. To make wow. to make me care. To make you people care. People probably said it to right, me before. Right, right. But I didn't care until it affected the That's person amazing. that I care the most right, about. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? I wanted people that I care the most about. So, you know, it's a give or take thing. We both learn from each other, like I said. But yeah, I'm always actively seeking to learn and like I said earlier, just to be a better person, like to learn mm -hmm. something every day and be better every day. And I think that we both learn from our conversations and our time that we spend with each other. So check out the Trendsetters new mixtape, The Dope Avengers of the Trendsetters, on all streaming services and YouTube, featuring Millie Bobby Brown's favorite song. Millie, you saw the video, right? Yes, I did. Did you yeah. love it? I loved it. It was one of my favorites. Yes. I would have thought the weirdo would become the hero. Her name is Eleven, she is not a zero. Their YouTube hit, Don't Fit In. I don't fit in, I'm too busy spinning out. I don't fit in, cause that's not what I'm about. The slam dunk highlight hype track, Westbrook Face. I'll make the Westbrook face. I'll make the Westbrook face. You don't want no smoke when I step up in the place. And the new fan favorite, Serial Killer. You know I need the big bowl with the big spoon. Eating all the cereal while I'm watching cartoons. Now we got to talk about your son. Nick. New York Nick. New York Nick. Yeah. Talk about that relationship. As my son is not with my wife, my daughter's mom. Um, During our very lengthy relationship, you know, we had a breakup. Before we even got married, we had like a three-year breakup. And during that time, I was definitely outside wilding. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was like on rapper shit, just just moving, just moving right, around. Right. Um, yeah, so the difficult part early on was just going back to, because even though my wife and I weren't together, obviously we started a family together, we had a child together. Um, I would see my daughter every day, I would see her every day. So I had to go back to both of them. And how I let them know where I was in my life and what was going on. So a couple of things happened. <clears throat> um, Kimberly, who was my girlfriend at the time, was like, well, whatever you need, you know, whatever you got going on, you know, I'm always here for you. And that kind of started the rekindling of us getting back together. Um, we got married shortly after that. And um, Taylor was confused because she was five and she was like wait what does that mean like i'm gonna have a brother that's that i can live with me that's not with mom she was trying to process it all which was right. really tough Why? for right. me to get through um and then it was also like oh shit i'm gonna have another child in a whole different circumstance and the situation than what i'm used to having and less than ideal Mm -hmm. of the way I wanted to do things. But, you know, life happens. You got to accept life on life terms. Right. And so, again, that was just like a whole fresh reset of trying to, again, figure out how to navigate parenthood, fatherhood. But this with a different set of rules. You know, how do you parent from outside the house? Um, how do you get everybody on the same page? How do you blend this, this family? You know what I'm saying? So I just, like, made a whole new bed for me to figure out how to lay in. <laughs> And and we still working through it. So when men have boys, it's hard for us to look at them and not see ourselves. And I know early on I had all these visions for what my sons would be. And then down the road, as they do, grew up, and then they became whoever the heck that they were supposed to be, mm -hmm. which was way <laughs> not the vision that I had. Did you have any of those types of struggles with your son and your relationship with him or were you always like whatever you want so for me it's always whatever my kids wanted to do okay it, I didn't, it wasn't a yo you got to go to college and you right. got to get this degree and you got it was like tell me what you want to do tell me what you're passionate about let's figure out if there's a career in it if there's mm -hmm. a way to monetize it down the line right but first just find something that you love that you would do if you never made a cent and then I'm going to invest sure. time and energy into it. Um, my son's like, I like in the basketball. Now, am I like most dads who want to see his kid go to NBA? Right, and, right, you know, right. I would love that. But if he detours and says, y'all want to do something different, all right, what's your plan? How are you going to mm -hmm. make it? How are we going to make it work? You know, so I'm always, um, I'm going to always invest in my kids' dreams and I'm going to utilize my resources to try to make it a reality. And so, Nick is all for that. Taylor's not big on nepotism. 
And I'm like, this is literally the way everybody gets things done. <laughs> like, get over yourself. Right. I get it. She's her own person. She want to do her own things. Now she's a little more open to at least allow me to make introductions and things of that nature. But for the longest time, she was totally against it. Like, mm. yo, if you know a person, I don't even want that job. And I'm like, yo, don't you know this how the rest of the wow. world works? Come on. Nick is like, oh, nah, you know the, the you know, joint brand? Because I right. need a 12 and a half. Right, and right, like, right. My whole team needs jerseys, so... This interview ain't over yet, but I wanted to let you know that this is just a piece of a longer conversation you can check out on the Rap Dad Show podcast on all platforms. I don't want you to miss gems like this. We're going to play a game called Most Likely To. Most likely to resell a pair of your sneakers. Nicholas. <laughs> well, he's wait, wait. percent. He was New York Nick this whole interview. No, he's and Nicholas. He's Nicholas. <laughs> we do bullshit. He's Nicholas. I wouldn't be surprised if I miss a pair now. Before we dip out, I want to know if you have some advice for fathers who are in or headed into a position that you're in where you have a child with two different women. What were some of the things that you did or maybe some of the things that you failed at that you wish you did better that men could learn from about trying to navigate those relationships? For sure. I definitely could have did a better job at just establishing communication and making sure like boundaries and lines weren't crossed. And, you know, everybody was, I was just trying to please everybody. Mm. I didn't want to upset home. I didn't want to end up in child support court. I didn't want a judge telling me how much I could see my kid. Mm -hmm. So I was really trying to keep everybody happy. And that's not, yeah, that's not humanly possible in any regard. Mm -mm. And so, um, yeah, I just, you know, I learned from, the things that I didn't do right. But with that said, I'm I'm not um I'm not ever gonna I'm not ever gonna take anything away from my son's mom mm-hmm. and, and how she's been she you know, it got bumpy, but she's never made my life hell. Inten- you know her. what I'm saying? Yeah, she never like was was on no evil, vindictive, mm. oh, you happy? Oh, you getting to it? Oh, nah, we got to shut this. Like, she was never on that type of time. And my wife was never like, he can't be here. He can't be around. I don't want... You know what I'm saying? Like, they both respected and uh, care for me enough to say, listen, ultimately, you want to have a relationship with your son, and we're going to allow that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, the advice I would give is don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Avoid it at all costs. Facts. Um, it's just, it's really a lot to handle. Yeah. You got to be a special type of person and you got to have the right kind of people to even make it mm-hmm. work with. So, you know, it's never going to be easy. You just don't want to make it harder right. than it has to be. Rap Dads. Thanks for watching. I know you got some gems from this episode. If so, hit that like button and share your favorite takeaways in the comments. This is just a taste of a much longer conversation you can find on your favorite podcast platforms. Tap in with us on social media. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. For fly merch and updates, check out rapdads.com and join the mailing list so you're always up to date. Remember our mantra was best for my child wins. God bless you and your family. Peace.